mind of a champion is a mind that knows when it's time to exhibit humility. And humility is putting aside your selfish desires and coming together with people to achieve the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to win. Winning not just on the basketball court or in football, but winning in life. Everybody bring it in, hurry up, let's go. Hey, we're gonna do a quick, not really a scrimmage, but we're gonna work on a 2-2, two, two, or 2-2-1, two, two, full court, a diamond press, and 2-3 half court, all right? I wanna run all three of those in the game. All right, so, uh, let me go ahead and spread y'all out. Let me get Jalen on here. Started coaching about 11 years ago. Uh, initially, uh, I started coaching at the YMCA because they offered me a free gym membership and um, started to enjoy just coaching basketball, coaching youth. And our team started winning games, and then I started to get requests from parents to keep coaching their kids and to keep coaching and to start coaching their younger siblings. So that's kind of how I got into the coaching basketball. I've coached in several leagues. I've coached at the YMCA, I've coached at the NBA, and uh, I've had the, chance, the opportunity to coach at the city league level. And it has probably been some of the best uh, competition that I've seen in the last 10 years. Well, right now we have three teams in the city league. We have an 8U, a 10U, and a 12U. We started out with the, 12, with the 10U, and with that team making the playoffs, we had kids moving up, so we decided to do the 12U league. Now, with that being said, we didn't have any older kids, so basically we were throwing younger kids out there to compete with more experienced teams. So with that being said, when you have a limited um, set of, of children, it could be challenging to make it to the playoffs, especially when you have teams that have had kids play in this league for you know a year or a year and a half. So with our 10 and under, we made the playoffs every year. Uh, we added the eight and under last season, and they've been successful. So that the main thing now is trying to get that 12U team uh, not only to compete, but 
to make it to the playoffs. Uh, one thing with the 12U, uh, we've always been undersized and we've never really had any tall players on our team. Like I said before, we always started with these kids that are aged around seven, eight, nine, and moved them up. And we've never, you know, really had a big man. But this season, we were actually uh, had the opportunity to, to have a guy that was about six two, six three on our roster to help out with rebounding. Because that's one thing we've always been short on was rebounding and, and uh, block shots. Hey, listen. Hey, we're gonna start out half court, man to man. Now, when I tell you to put the pressure on full court, we do diamond or we do two one two half court. Or two two one, y'all remember we did that in practice. Just know your spot. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. Let's go hard work on three. Let's go. Bring it in, bring it in, Jalen, hurry up. One, two, three. Oh,
lost to the Titans for a couple of reasons. I don't think we came to play in the first half, if you go back and watch the tape. Uh, another reason was we were not boxing out. We weren't playing, you know, we didn't start turning up that Jackson Nugget defense until the second half. Uh, the other team was getting rebounds, they were out hustling us. Uh, we were missing a few players, and that can always be pivotal when you're trying to achieve a goal. Uh, another thing, we have to keep our emotions kind of, there's nothing wrong with showing your emotions, but you have to know when and where to do that. Especially when you're playing in a little league like this, when uh, coaches and refs are looking at attitudes and if they see anything that they think can be a, a potential problem, they'll shut it down. So uh, I know we were drive, we were coming back in this game and in the fourth quarter we were down by three and then we received a technical foul, which uh, caused them to, I think they made a free throw, missed the free throw, and they got the rebound and scored again. And that we went from a three-point lead, uh, a deficit of three, to a deficit of six, and that kind of sealed the game. Being a volunteer coach, you have to deal with a, a lot of things. You have to deal with uh, kids that that sign up, that pay to play basketball, um, trying to find playing time for kids that are struggling, trying to balance out playing time for kids that are pretty good. Um, you deal with parents that want their kids to play all the time. Um, even when you have a, a roster of 15 and you're running a seven minute a quarter game so you have to be able to have that balance um, when you're dealing with with those types of things so thing we focusing on right now, winning this game Saturday. What is it gonna take to win this game Saturday? Oh, hold, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. We're gonna go down the line. Teamwork. Beating the Beamers. Beating the Beamers, how we gonna beat them? How we gonna beat them? Just by playing them. No, it ain't just by playing them. We gotta be able to protect the ball. Nobody need to kick it. Make good passes, attack the basket, and playing great defense. A lot of people look at games as rivalries, I, I think it's more of a, a competitive rivalry, not just we don't like this team, they don't like us. I think it's more of you have two good teams that, that play good basketball, and when that happens, that's when you get these rivalries. Um, fortunately for us, uh, we probably have a, a few rivalries, uh, maybe more than some of these other teams because those games are so competitive. And uh, the last couple of seasons, it seems like our last game always came down to the same team, and that game meant us making the playoffs or not, or having a chance to make the playoffs. But when you have games like that, it's, it's, it's good for the kids, it's good for the parents, it's, it's really just good basketball. So uh, sometimes I wish I could sit in the stands and watch, but you know, it's, could you, it's a different look from 
being down there by the court than sitting in the stands. So we're gonna do our rebound tip here, then we're gonna do a box out here. Alright? You already know you're gonna have some people that's gonna be taller than you, you're gonna have people that's shorter, but we still gotta be able to box them out and get those rebounds. Uh, one thing I can say about high school basketball is a lot of the plays and the defense that we use and some of the mottos I do I did get from my high school basketball coach. Uh, we trying to attack the match. We got a box out with no drill. We need Bruce. All right, you got to pay attention. So if you hear me say, man, you got to tell your whole team, let's go. Nuggets on three. Let's go. Let's get in there. Right? Yeah, first of all, we had no attitude problem. problem. Uh, one of the models he would say is hard work. We'd get in the huddle and we'd say one, two, three, hard work, or he'd have it on a sign in the gym. So that's one thing I try to preach to my kids that you have to work hard, whether it's in life or in basketball or anything. Um, no one's just going to give anything to you, and I want them to learn that at a young age.
us to go under 500 so the initial goal was to at least be 500 this year um, if we could exceed that and make the playoffs it'd be great Our team, we could have we could have written our own ticket as far as playoffs. Uh, we had the talent. I mean, we were the, the third highest scoring team in the league. So what does that tell you when you're the third highest scoring team, but you finish seventh place? Is it because of the talent level? Is it because that we're not playing together? Is it because we're not playing a full game? Or is it because you're taking certain things for granted? A lot of these kids at this age, they, they don't realize it's a privilege to, to play basketball, especially when you have coaches that take time out of their schedule to work with you and help you. And if you don't appreciate it and you take it for granted, uh, you could miss out on a great opportunity. Because I, I feel that we could have possibly even made the championship game. If not that game, we could have got close. We could have gotten close. I don't think everyone takes it for granted. We have players that are humble, they are, they're willing to work hard, and they're willing to learn. Hey, look at some cool. y'all better yell at each other. One, two, three! Go again! Win some, you lose some. That's all you gotta say for the camera lens. Overall, I feel like we have some of the best kids in Jackson. Like, you know, when you're young like that, you make mistakes. So you can't hold it against 
a child, the thing is you, you just need to teach them that life lesson and help them learn, you know, learn from their mistakes and grow as a man. I woke up at four o'clock and rushed to the airport to get back for this game. Flew into Atlanta, then we flew in to Jackson to get back for this game and to miss half the team. <laughs> but we didn't get blown out. <laughs> we didn't get blown out. We didn't have a losing season. And we still, once again, were one game away from making the playoffs. But the other two teams are in the playoffs. <laughs> Got a lot of potential for the future. But one thing these kids have to realize is not just one thing these kids have to realize is not just about you, it's about the team. You gonna win as a team. It's always good to have something to strive for next season. So hopefully by getting this close and seeing it right there in your grasp and, missed, and missing out on it, uh, maybe that will be motivation for that team to, to make it to the playoffs this year coming up, this season.